So we're here with Richard from Pirate Heating Supplies. I think the purpose of today's video is to basically identify the things that aren't typically fitted on heat pump systems, kind of what's nice to have, what's essential, and what installers typically miss. So there's a lot here, Rich. There is. Should we start here? Yeah, so for me, with heat pump systems, it's really important we get all the air out. Okay, yeah. once you understand actually what air in systems does, it's not a good thing to have. So two things, it inhibits the amount of heat that's transferred to the emitters, mm -hmm. and it also causes nuisance in systems. Okay. So those are, those, are, those are sort of two key points. The other thing is, is obviously it causes corrosion. Mm -hmm. So if you've got oxygen in the system, and it's in there with your radiators, if you don't get it all out, it actually starts corroding your system, right. okay? Generally, no matter how much you inhibit a system, mm -hmm. it will still corrode. Okay. Okay, so because that dosage rate over time diminishes, mm -hmm. so if you've got a system that's not checked, mm -hmm. it, will, it will kind of have a corrosion rate. This is one of the things that we kind of sell that, that works for that. So this is called a de-aerator. And the way it works is that the water goes into the unit. This chamber here, is a lot larger so actually micro bubbles and what they call daughter bubbles believe okay. it or not is a hell of a word right but daughter bubbles are released okay into this top section which are then vented out of the circuit right okay, okay. and then the water is then returned back to your circuit so there's two things why I, li why I like these is that firstly when you're on when you're commissioning a system they just help that initial purge right and then over in the longer term, they actually remove like the daughter bubbles mm. and, the, and the micro bubbles that are actually in the system. Right. So micro bubbles turn into daughter bubbles and then they're released. These are key critical. I, th I think anyone that's not fit in any sort of yeah, good no. air management in any heating system, whether that be a heat pump or a gas boiler system, mm. I think you're missing a trick. And I just think in the longer term, when you, you know, you imagine, you know, decorators removing radiators or whatever happens in the future, you've always got something that's going to protect the circuit. And I mean, we're just the, the, the kind of poster child of this because we had work that, uh, done recently. Uh, we actually insisted that they put back our old kind of uh, air release valve. Yeah. They were adamant about, no, no, you don't need it. Uh, obviously, the system got drained. It got refilled. There was air everywhere. You introduced me to a new term called cavitation. Yeah. Uh, basically, you could, you could yeah. hear it running through the actual pump itself. In addition to the inefficiencies, obviously, you do not want that quantity of air in this. So you need to find a solution that will, over time, as you said, you replace the rad or whatever it is, you do need to be able to get that air out. This is exactly why we fit these. This goes on every specification I do, right. every every job that I, I do for you know installers when they come to us and ask us for a decent spec, these, these will be on it. So how does that vary to kind of like your traditional air release valve, which is obviously a lot cheaper than that, I'm guessing. Do they kind of do the same thing? Yeah, or... similar. So but that obviously does it a lot better. I mean, the, the beauty of these is the fact that you've got the water going through them all the time. The problem with these is that yes, they work in high points of your system, mm -hmm. but the water doesn't actually flow through them, it flows past. Right. So if you imagine you've got a, a heat pump system and you've got much higher velocity going mm -hmm. through the pipe work than say a gas boiler potentially, actually the, the air that's in the fluid actually goes straight past the air valve, yeah. yeah? It's actually got to become stationary before the air's released. So yes, these work in high points. So so definitely if you had a high point in your heating circuit and we we, we were struggling with that, mm -hmm. you, you'd normally fit these. But generally I prefer a de-aerator yeah. than actually like a like a high level air release valve. Fair point. So you actually fitted one of these yeah. onto our system to actually get the air out of our underfloor heating system. It's actually quite a, a clever little tool yeah. uh, in that um, it's called a, a, a flush and fill valve. Yep, yeah, all the other way around. <laughs> It's called a fill and flash valve. It worked tremendously well. You basically yeah. just put the pipes onto the respective sides. Yep. You, you force the water through from mains yep. uh, through the actual system. This wouldn't typically go on every system. You put it on ours because there was probably no other way for you to do that. Is that correct? I didn't used to specify the fill and flush valves that much, but actually I, I think they're essential these days. Mm -hmm. if, if you're filling any heating system, I mean, the, the, the best way to do it is to do it in a way that you can actually get all the air out. So the beauty of these is, is generally in normal working mode, you have this lever on the top mm -hmm. and you have that hot, um, opposing yeah. like that. And that allows the water just to go through mm -hmm. the valve. Yeah. But when you close it like that, then that stops the water flowing through. And the only way the water can actually get in and out of the system is through your hoses. Okay. So then you have one as a drain. So you have this from your return of your circuit out to drain and you have your mains water coming in and through your circuit. Mm -hmm. And that way you can actually get all the air out 
and actually have yeah. any dirt or debris released out. So if you fit this on the return before the heat pump, because a lot of people I know, I think I think it was Barry saying he, he doesn't like flushing mm. heat pumps through, yeah. you know, that you try and do a bypass loop mm -hmm. and then you flush it that way. With these, you don't actually have to, because you imagine if you've got this on the return side to the heat pump and you're only putting mains cold water into here, uh, and the dirt's coming out the other way, right? You're never going to get any mains dirt go actually true. through the heat pump itself. True. So, so it's just a really clever way, I think, of the guys that are doing heat pump installations. If you've got half decent mains pressure, then fit one of these. Okay. And what pray tell is this? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd ask that because it's not it's not an obvious one. No. So this actually on on most heating systems or all heating systems actually, you you have an expansion vessel. One problem though with expansion vessels is that when you fit them. You do need to check the expansion vessel pressure every year. Okay. Okay. So to do that, these are fitted to the expansion vessel itself. So that nut there screws to the bottom of the expansion vessel. And what it allows you to do is whenever you do a heat a heating service, uh -huh. you can turn this off, isolate the expansion vessel from the system. So instead of having to drain down your system, you can isolate it, drain off the excess water out of here from the expansion vessel, uh -huh. and then you can actually recharge your expansion vessel every year. Uh, check so the pressure in there. Okay. Okay, and it's so instead of having to drain down the circuit or drop the pressure out of the heating circuit, it's just a really quick way of just making sure that's, that's checked and done. So this one is very similar to um, your bottle ones, but they're a lot it looks more, similar to that in design. It is very similar in design, but these are designed to go high level. So I generally fit these because they're much, much more reliable than your bo okay. bottle vents. So I fit these generally to the top of like volumizers or buffer cylinders. Okay. So those areas where the water from the heating circuit comes into it. Mm -hmm. You've got a big vat of water yeah. in there that okay. can release air from, mm -hmm. and then the air is released at the top. So some guys fit these with isolation valves. Um, the problem with doing that is that if any, any air is released into that volumizer, mm -hmm. that buffer cylinder maybe, I know we don't fit buffer, yeah. but I generally specify volumizer on a lot mm -hmm. of my systems, is that you put those on the top of the volumizers and then that does actually release the air. Well. And then we've got something that I think a lot of people do put in, just a, a filter. Is it something that you would recommend goes on every system? Or again, is it kind of more of a selective type thing or should it just be standard? I would fit some sort of strainer mm -hmm. on a system. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say you'd need a magnetic filter on every okay. system, because especially if it's new, right? The benefit for these is, well, personally, how, what I think is actually, it's not the fact that it's a magnetic filter. Some of the issues that the guys have with central heating systems is actually the gauze mesh. So they fit like an inline strainer, which I think you had on your side. We did, yeah, yeah, we did. They block up really quickly. Very quickly. Where actually with this type of filter, it's, I don't use it for the magnetic properties. Actually, I use it for the fact that it's got the same size gauze mesh and gauze filter in it as an inline strainer, uh -huh. but you've got a much bigger area, surface area. So you have a lot of issues with heat pumps where you speed the flow up through the system. But yeah. You have the in retrofit market you have actually the debris the old debris come out of the system and it blocks the fist the filters up mm -hmm. on the pipe work and mm -hmm. the problem with that is then you have low flow faults uh -huh. yeah, and you must time. see those all the time all on the, the forums right and it this would fix it yeah this is clever. the truth so this has got such a big area on the filter that it's very hard to block all that uh -huh. and even if you blocked half of it you still got your full flow through the top so that's generally why i i sort of specify these and there's not many things on the market actually like it I and mean, i prefer these to like inline strainers although they do take up a little bit more space than an inline strainer does mm -hmm. you know call out and call backs and for yeah. customer headache sort of thing when they when they do have a low flow flow fault and they've got to then deal with that you know got to get an installer back out or you know you might reduce the the sort of time that that happens and how easy is it to actually clean this so Obviously, you've got your, your, your pipe work running through here. Yeah. Uh, in order to stop that, would you just fit isolation valves yeah, on either yeah. side? I wish I'd got them out of the box now, but actually there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's isolation valves both sides. Yeah. So you literally just isolate both sides. You can take that out. Open and, it. Yeah, you've got a little air bleed here I as well. That, so yeah. You can actually open that, depressurize the canister, and then you can actually take that out, clean it out once a year. Clever. And the other mystery piece on the table is this one. What is that? So this is an isolation valve for heat pumps, okay? So you imagine if you want to isolate your heat pump to do any service work on it okay. or maintenance. So this is actually a new design by Intertech. It allows you to actually insulate the pipework and the valve, 
okay? So a lot of problems with uh, valves like this is it's very hard to insulate that part of the valve. Oh, I see. Because okay. imagine putting insulation over that. How are you going to isolate? Oh, I see. Yeah. The beauty of this is that you can actually put insulation over the pipework and the valve itself, and you can still access the top piece on there. Okay. So and you have like a little Allen key slot oh, on there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And you put an Allen key into that, rotate it, 90 degrees nice. and it actually shuts the valve off and you can do all that while it's all still insulated so these are these are really really great i think it's a really good design by intertech you know when you're trying to keep all the heat in because remember we, we had a little discussion on your own system yeah. about keeping the heat in mm -hmm. when you're trying to keep all the heat in the pipework and all the valve and fit yeah. it's really important to like think about that as an installer i've got to be honest we've had none of this on our system barring the little uh, air release valve uh, but I think that this is a conversation to be had with your installer. Even if it's not 100% necessary for your system, ask the questions, see what's uh, possible, what's what should be put in, and take it from there. Best thing is to have that conversation and uh, just see what they are fitting, why they're fitting it. They've got to have a reason for it, right? Yeah. So, so obviously don't just accept certain filters, certain deaerators. Ask them why they're fitting it, mm -hmm. you know, what success they've had in other systems yeah. doing that. And, you know, the difference between installers that do and installers that don't Generally, if they're not fitting them, I would be asking the questions why. And if they say you don't need an air release bulb of any sort on your system, red flag? I would say it's a, you know, a sort of a bronzy flag. <laughs> bronzy <know>? flag. <laughs> so Richard, if anybody's watching this and they're interested in any of these pieces of kit, where can they get them? Yeah, pirateheatandsupplies.com. Link in the description. Awesome, Rich. Thanks for your time. Thank you.